What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing video. As you can see, we are out on the beach this evening. Got a little bit of wind, a little bit of kind of dingy water, but we're gonna try our luck and see what we can get this wintertime surf fishing day. Bright blue skies, nice white sand. It's just a beautiful day overall. But this video is sponsored by Sword Fishing Products. As you see, I'm wearing their hat and performance shirts. They make a few different styles of performance shirts and some little bit of clothing. And then they have some really nice fillet knives. And they are one of the newest sponsors of the channel. So I appreciate Sword Fishing. I'll include a link down in the description below if you wanna go check them out. But without further ado, let's get baited up and get to fishing. All right, so my bait of choice today is gonna to be some dead shrimp. This is some previously frozen shrimp, but it was freshly frozen. So it should get the job done and then today i have the pomp candy fish gum just going to cut some small pieces off of this and let's go ahead and bait up our pompano rigs i'll be throwing a frisky fins pompano rig all i'm going to do is take this small piece of shrimp thread it on the hook and then stick my fish gum on there just like that and that is a perfectly baited up rig. So we're gonna do the same thing. These are just high-low rigs or double drop pompano rigs. They just got two hooks, I got some floats, especially on uh, dirty water conditions like today. Those floats do help a lot to get the fish's attention and keep it from getting buried in the surf. So we'll bait up the same thing here. All right, now let's get these rods casted out here. Now my setups are nine foot surf rods. These are designed specifically for surf fishing. I like the nine foot rod, it's perfect for our area. And then I have a 20 pound mono top shot, which is about 60 yards or so. Then I have 20 pound braid backing and pretty much 5,000 size reels. So let's go ahead and get these casted out, set in our rod holders here, spaced out about 20 feet and see what we can get today. I'm gonna try not to get wet because it's cold. And I don't often wear shoes and blue jeans to the beach. It's like against everything I believe in, <laughs> but here we go. There's a medium cast there, probably about 50 yards or so. Set that in the rod holder. And anytime you set anything in the rod holders, you always wanna loosen that drag up just a little bit. So if a big fish takes your rod or if you get a bite, they can run and won't take your rod out of the rod holder. So always loosen that drag, then you can adjust it when you do get a bite and catch a fish. But this one's out, let's get the other one casted out. All right, so I've got both these rods baited up and casted out. Now let's just play that fun waiting game and see who, if we can hook into anything. I would like to take some fish home and cook them up today, if possible. Hopefully we can catch us a fish, so stay tuned, see what we hook into. This one just got a bite. Is it on? Oh yeah, it's on, it's on. Oh, big fish, <laughs> big fish on the frisky fence that's a good one. Oh, i hope it's a big drum i'm oh yeah come on let's get this sucker in i'm pretty sure that's what it is it's a big drum that was on the frisky fence literally I first cast got one come on yeah it's coming in pretty good come on now I like that 20 pound monofilament because it kind of gives like a, a shock leader per se. You know, it absorbs when those fish first hit it, it stretches a little bit. So that's either a stingray or a shark. What is that? Oh no, redfish, redfish. Redfish on the frisky fins. First cast on the frisky fins rig. Beautiful redfish. I'm gonna take this one home and cook it. That is awesome, check that out. Look at that, that circle hook did its job right in the corner of its mouth. Fish gum, shrimp, and frisky fence. First cast of the day. Winter surf fishing at its finest. Alrighty, so I'm gonna keep this fish. It is probably oversized, which I don't normally keep the bigger redfish, but this one right here is a perfect size to take home and eat without getting too much red meat or wormy. So. That's a beautiful fish. Wintertime surf fishing at its finest. Check out the spots on his tail. First cast with the rig and managed this nice redfish. That is awesome. What a great day. 
So now we can test out that sword fillet knife when we get home. But this is a rig that me and Frisky Fins came up with that would suit me pretty good. That's a Bama Salt Water Frisky Fins rig. I think that color works real well, especially with my favorite color fish gun, which is the Pomp Candy. And you saw that it got the job done first time using it. That is awesome. So let's go ahead and measure them just to get a measurement and then throw them in the cooler and get baited back up again. All right, so I did measure it. 27 inches, so just an inch over slot, but I'm allowed one over slot per day in Alabama out of my three fish, the redfish, so that's a perfect size. This will provide some good meat at home, and we'll go home and cook it, but let's go ahead and get baited back up and get back to fishing. All right, I think this one just went slack, so see if there's a fish on it. Either that or it got pushed up by the waves. I think there's a fish on it, we'll find out. <laughs> I just caught that redfish, and it looks to be a whiting on this one. Yep, a northern kingfish. So this is a whiting, it's in that whiting family. There's three different kinds. The one with the tallest dorsal fin is a northern kingfish, and it has these cool stripes. So this would actually make really good redfish bait as well as cut bait, but I've caught a big redfish already for today. So I'm gonna toss this back and see what else we can get. So it's this fish's lucky day. But, all right, Northern Kingfish, AKA Whiting. All right, buddy. These are actually really good bait for those redfish and black drum and sharks, amber jack when you go offshore. <laughs> but that one gets to go back in the surf. All right, we haven't got much more bites after that. That is so crazy how it can be so sporadic in such a short period of time and then nothing else happens after that. So, but that's just wintertime surf fishing or really just fishing in general. But wintertime surf fishing, midday and the evening bites usually better than early morning. So you can sleep in a little bit or go fishing in the afternoon when the sun comes up some more because it allows the water to warm up and everything gets a little bit more active versus early in the morning. That's mainly for wintertime. Once you get to summer, spring, and fall, you want to get up those low light periods of day because that's when fishing's usually best. But we're going to go home and I'm going to bury this redfish in ice and then I'm going to clean this fish tomorrow because we're running out of daylight. But for y'all, it will be in just a couple seconds. Sword is a new sponsor of the channel and they're awesome enough to send out some knives to try out. So we're going to take this seven inch fillet knife here and put it to the test today on this beautiful redfish here. But if you want to pick you up any sword fishing products such as this fillet knife right here i'll link it down in the description below but let's go ahead and get into the cleaning first thing i like to do is flip it around and come right behind this gill plate they have some big scales so you want to get through those scales just like that and then i flip my knife around and go right along the back here and you can find a little zipper and a sharp knife usually in one fluid motion We'll open it right up. And then I go down to the tail. And then all you do is just flay it right off the bone. So take your knife and just slide it along that bone. Try not to miss any meat here. We'll get plenty of meat off this beautiful redfish. Now once you get to the middle section or the rib cage, I like to go up and over and back down again so you don't miss that bottom loin of meat. And then I poke my knife through and I'll usually just fillet it right down to the back. And I don't normally cut it all the way off the tail because I'll show you what I do here to get the skin off. I'll flip it around and get it off this rib cage. Get it off the rib cage here. There we go. Now really simple, just fillet it off the skin and I'll normally cut it through. And that's why I leave it hooked up to the fish still and I don't cut the tail off all the way because I can kind of use it as weight to hold that skin tight as I fillet it off this fish. Now a lot of people have their own way of doing it, but this is just the way I do it. And you wanna be careful anytime you are using sharp objects, obviously. But I left a little bit of meat on there because there's so much red meat on these bigger fish that if you fillet it right next to the skin, you're gonna have a big layer of red or fatty meat. So I kinda of leave a little layer of skin just like that. And then what we'll do is come through, cut it in half, going to cut this bloodline out it's a sharp knife i love it you can do really good work with a sharp knife and there's a beautiful top loin of that redfish like i said i do leave a lot of meat on the skin and this is a bigger fish but the bigger they get the more bloodline you get even when you do bleed them 
and sometimes you get that big rib cage on these redfish and they have a big head so i like that top loin but everybody is different but i don't waste any of this this will go in the crab trap and hopefully produce some crabs so we can go fishing another day but that knife made easy work the skin on these things are so cool. You can almost make like boots out of them. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side of this fish here, and then we'll go up and start cooking this meat. Now, a lot of time the throat meat, especially on a bigger fish like this, is really good fried. Same thing with red snapper. If you get a big red snapper, you can cut that throat meat out and fry it. But like I said, I'm gonna throw this carcass in the crab trap. So I left a little bit of meat on there so the crabs have something to eat. Cause I would like some crabs to go beach fish again and try to get on a big black drum or something. So I'm down at the water. I'm gonna put this crab trap out with this red fish. I left meat on there so the crabs have something to actually eat rather than just a carcass. So there we go. Should be able to get some crabs for the next time we go surf fishing. So let's go toss this out. It is a windy day. I hope y'all can hear me. Woo! Almost fell off. Okay, crab traps out. Let's go upstairs and start cooking. All right, y'all, we are inside with our cleaned up redfish. This is gonna be our lunch for today. So I have my redfish fillets. We're gonna be making some redfish tacos. I'm just gonna pan sear them or grill them on the stove top here, make it real simple because it's pretty frozen outside right now. But I have some EVOO, a special blend of spices here. Got a little bit of onion, paprika, cayenne pepper, salt, garlic powder, a little bit of parsley flakes. So just a little bit of seasoning that I'm trying out here and it tastes pretty good. And some cumin powder in there. So we'll try that out and see how that is. And then goat cheese, crumbles flour tortillas and then last but not least this Herdez guacamole salsa this stuff's really good all this stuff is really to choice and to your flavor if you have a seasoning you like or different tortillas or different toppings you can do that but I think this is going to be a pretty good combination with this salsa and then the crumbled goat cheese I'm going to let a little bit of extra virgin olive oil warm up in the pan here and then what I want to do is coat my fish with some EVOO There we go. A couple tablespoons will work. And then I'm gonna take my season blend here and sprinkle it on. So you can do as little or as much as you like. The good thing is, is this sauce is creamy enough and has a very good flavor to complement this spice rub. So we can add a decent amount and not worry about it being too overpowering. And then I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty here. But that's a coated up piece right there. Our pan should be getting warm. And then let's go ahead and stick our fish on there. That EVOO is a little bit healthier than just butter, but if you like to use butter, because I do, throw right ahead. But it also allows it not to stick. And I just have this on medium heat right now because we want it to brown, but we don't want it to burn. Because these are thicker pieces, majority of them are, especially that top one of that redfish. We want it to be cooked thoroughly. All right, it's been five minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and take our spatula here and flip it. Wow, those look good. Look at that, you want that brown finish on there? but you don't want it burnt. We'll let these cook for another five minutes on this side, cook the rest of these up. And then next we just want to soften and brown our tortillas a little bit so we have some nice crunch and flavor for our tacos. All right, yeah, it's been another five minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and plate these fish. Look at that one right there. That's a good piece of redfish. There's the last piece. So next we're gonna take a flat cast iron here and do our tortillas. All we gonna do is soften them and brown them just a little bit just about a quarter size thing there and spread it around let's go ahead and start browning our tortilla here shouldn't take very long cast iron holds heat really well go ahead and flip it that didn't take very long at all all right we just got done browning our tortillas look at that they look delicious and they smell great and let's take some of our delicious looking redfish oh wow look at that beautiful white meat Put it in the center of our taco. Do the same thing on this one. Next thing, let's add some of our salsa. So this stuff's really good. It's a very creamy salsa. It's got a great taste to it. All right, let's sprinkle some of this crumbled goat cheese on there. This stuff actually smells really good. All right, and the good thing about tacos is you can be messy with them because they are delicious. So don't be afraid to chomp down and bite into it. But look at that taco right there fresh redfish we know where we got it right off the beach man i cannot wait so let's go ahead and take a bite 
Mm. Mm hmm. That is wonderful. Let me get a napkin. Well, let's take another bite. That was wonderful. The fish is great. It doesn't have an overpowering seasoning taste, which is what you want when you cook fresh fish like that. You don't want to cover it up with a bunch of seasoning. Well, let's take another bite here. Hmm. But I'm going to go ahead and finish my lunch. I appreciate y'all for watching. This turned out wonderful. I hope you can get out there and try this yourself. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and comment down below. And if you want to keep up with more, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Hopefully we can get into a big fish again. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.